Hello and welcome to the channel's book club. My name is Ola Kunle Kasumo and it's great to be on the show again this week. Today is special because we've got a special book and a special guest. One of the greatest midfielders in the history of Nigeria is Sunday Olise. I mean, we all know Sunday Olise, who is just uh, was just a genius of a midfielder. Today, Sunday Olise is our guest on the show. He's written an autobiography titled Audacity to Refuse. For many years, I've been looking forward to Nigerian sports stars writing their autobiographies and publishing them. That has not really happened. So this is a trailblazing work Sunday Olise has done, and hopefully it will inspire other great sports stars in Nigeria to write their own stories and have them published. This is a beautiful book Sunday has written. We caught up with him and had a conversation about audacity to refuse. Enjoy this. Sande Olise is a multiple title winning ex-professional footballer for Nigeria and top world clubs including Juventus, ISFC and Borussia Dortmund. He is an Olympic gold medalist, an African champion, a FIFA technical committee member and a UEFA professional licensed coach. Sande is an international football consultant and analyst and has provided services for some of the top TV and radio networks in the world. Audacity to Refuse, his debut book, is an inspiring and fascinating memoir that tells his life story, reveals the dynamics of professional football life and offers important life lessons. Sonny, nice to have you on Channel's Book Club at last. Yeah, finally. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Great, great. Um, audacity to refuse. Sunday Olise, my story. This is the first autobiography written by <laughs> a Nigerian sports star from my own research and investigation. I've been asking people to correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm still waiting for somebody. So, congratulations. Oh, thanks. Or have you seen any other like this? No, but the aim was not to be the first anyway. I didn't even know us at the time. Which I was just trying to share my story, that's all. Great. What have, what have you been up to these days? Well, I've been home. So the first thing I've been doing is eating everyday Niger food. So <laughs> non-stop, even sometimes adding to breakfast. So, so it's um, yeah, running around family. But it's just that time, whenever I'm in Nigeria, time runs past, you know. Yeah. It's as if it's yesterday you came and today you're getting yeah, on the yeah, plane yeah, to go yeah, back yeah, again. Going so back again. Great, great. The well, time flies when you're having fun, they say. Great. So, Sunday, what inspired this um, this book? I, I was fascinated reading it. And oh, being, thanks. as you know, a football fan myself, it took me down memory lane. Yeah. Um, your era was the golden era of Nigerian football. And this took me back to the 1994 Nations Cup, the yeah. 2004. 1994 World Cup yeah. in the USA, um, but beyond that, also your life. Yeah. What inspired you into football when you grew up, your first club, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, but what 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 inspired this? Well, over the years, only I've been having so much questions. Almost everywhere I go, especially from my countrymen, huh? like, um, how did you do this? How did you do this? What happened here? How were you able to get this far? How what happened at this? particular occasion you know how can we can you share your experiences with us so that we can also use it and um, I've also felt that okay in my way of giving back also because I made some errors also along the line just as uh, fortunately for me the right choices were way way more than the errors so it's almost non-significant the errors although we learn from them anyway so share it with somebody else so that they might not run into those errors that we made or maybe make it smoother for them in their own way too for somebody curious um, out there what's audacity to refuse what will a reader find in here what have you put in here one basic thing the reader will find is that how do you handle limitations that exist 
I personally say the moment you are born into life, you're born into competition because there are limited resources. And we all, nobody wants to go through life unnoticed. Yeah. So we all, somehow, some will tell you, very few will admit it, but in reality, we're all in competition with the neighbor. I want to be best. I want to win. I want to eat. I want to be able to afford this. I want to be able to take care of my kids. I want to be able to uh, manage life, you know? So this book would kind of like give you how do I handle those limitations that are there that it doesn't inhibit my own progression in life. Mm. It doesn't stop me from being yeah. uh, the best version of myself that I can be. And it, the book itself is not only talking about football. It's talking about life also because, like you know, Kulis, even better than me, football does not exist in isolation. So yeah. if you are living a footballer's life, the things you experience are what the neighbor experiences in their own lives, but in, an, in a different field. So. Yeah. The book provides um, peeps into your life. Yeah. Uh, the average Nigerian, the average person out there who is into football knows Sunday only say the midfield player. Yeah. Um, ex captain, Super Eagles, Ajax, Juventus, and so on. But it shows your story growing up in a family that was poor. Yeah and then rising above all that, having a dream as a child to play football yeah. and being fortunate, or some will say lucky, yeah. you know, to be set on that path early in your life. Uh, um, these are some of the things the reader will find in here, aren't they? Yeah, um, like you rightfully said, and I'm, I'm really pleased that you have read the book because it helps my own nar narrative a lot in the sense that um, like I said, the book is not just about football. It's about life itself. It also shares, um, because some think, I've had people come to me like, what academy did you go to? What did you do, you know? Some think that we got this successful because we were fortunate to be in, had somebody to teach us or something like that. No, it's growing up from the hard streets of uh, Lagos. This is practically the concrete jungle of, uh, of mm. Africa. You know, and it's um, survival of the fittest. Like I said in the book, in Lagos we say, wise up or get eaten up. <laughs> so it's, um, it, it's like that. But I'm really grateful to God that, you know, I, I was able to succeed in what I chose to do in life, enough to be able to write about it. So. Yeah. You, you also provide a lot of behind the scene um, stories. Yeah. Um, dressing room stories, um, experiences with managers, yeah. racism in football, yeah. um, of course the many, many, many battles you Nigerian internationals had with the FA, yeah. the Football Federation in Nigeria, yeah, yeah. And, and so on. Uh, and you explained here that there are a lot of things in football that the average football fan does not see at all. Yeah. And you shared a lot of th those in this book. Yeah. And, and what I was just trying to take, I'm trying to take the reader behind the scenes without really pointing fingers. Otherwise, then the book becomes like a storytelling or whistleblowing. And that's not the aim. So, but you get to see also that because some might think, okay, you made it, it was an easy way. No, no, no. Yeah. And some might think that today you're reading about the Black Lives Matter, it was something that started yesterday. No, <laughs> at our time it was even worse. It was even worse because um, at our time we really had to, we knew that it was not enough to be good. You have to be way way better than uh, sometimes twice better than your competition in the club. Otherwise, you lose your place. Mm. Now this was this put an added pressure because already you are working out to succeed. But the standard you have to keep, to be able to keep the local player at bay, is, has to be high. Yeah. You know, and fairly good for the clubs too, because if they're employing a foreign player, well, why should we buy you or keep you? If local player, we're not paying that um, resources to buy into the club, is providing the same or almost the same. Mm. So that's, that's it. Some people see 
that Sunday Olise is very controversial. Yeah. Some mm. people say that about you. And you had your battles with the FA. But I was fascinated by something very impressive you said about a particular personality in FA history in Nigeria. I'm talking about um, Samson Omerua. Yeah, yeah. In, I think, page 306, where you said, an extraordinary chairman, Samson Omerua, is unanimously agreed as the best chairman president in the history of Nigeria's football by most, and definitely in my eyes. And you went on to say a lot of great things, you know, about him. Yeah. He seemed to have impressed you a lot. Yeah, he, he did. And um, he, he didn't only impress me, but I feel he played a major role in us bringing back the trophies we did to, upon, to Nigeria. You know, um, he's, for me, he's a great human being, you know, and um, let's call a spade a spade. You can play as a soccer player and be exceptional, but you also need somebody to be there to, like, manage things above in the right way. Sometimes take some decisions that might not please us or the, or, the, or the populace, but at the end of the day, that will get it done. Yeah. And that's what he did. And at times when um, there were conflicts with the Federation because of, yeah, I don't want to go into details, they're all in the book. Yeah. He played a, like a, a role like, okay, even though I'm the FA chairman, I accept that I have to Bend, otherwise we will all lose. Yeah. And and he did that. I had a, a personal private relationship with him, and um, the kind of relationship whereby he would come into his room and he would tell me some things, and then he would ask me some things, you know, and we would both agree that for the interest of the nation, this is how we have to do it, otherwise, the country loses. Yeah. Very few do that. Very few. The do ego that. doesn't allow it to do. It. And the thing there is that you see. I will address on your program this issue when they say Sondolisa is controversial. Very few newspaper men ever called Sondolisa controversial before 2002. It started in 2002. <laughs> when Sondolisa and his team refused to be robbed of their hard earned money. To now make me lose credibility in front of Nigerians, the problem was because he was being controversial. Now, like my father rightfully asked a journalist that confronted him once, he said, look, if you say my son is controversial, he did something wrong, print in words, on the lines, what he said, what he did. Don't just target controversial, print it. Let Nigerians decide if it's controversial. Not one wrote it. And thanks to God, one of the best players our country ever produced, they can't criticize you for not being good enough as a player. They can't criticize you for not being good enough as a coach because you had all the results. Um, you have so many titles. And the greatest criticism that I give is that you are controversial. <laughs> then I tell them, oh, man, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> because so, <laughs> thank, thank you for the compliment. So you consider that a compliment? Uh, hell yes, because <laughs> if it's a compliment if, 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 if you don't allow yourself to be robbed. <laughs> and then someone says, you're controversial. So today I'm still old money left and right, but what can I do? In spite of my refusal, in spite of my, you know, my audacity to refuse, <laughs> I'm still being old. What if I didn't have the audacity? Part of the reason why some say that about you is the fact that you are direct. Yeah. And I can see that in your book. You know, you are not afraid to tackle issues and tackle, uh, um, if necessary, tackle individuals. Mm -hmm. I saw that in your book where story after story, you address them head on. Yeah. Uh, including what you just discussed now, the 2002 um, experience. You, yeah. you have a chapter that is dedicated to that. A big chapter. You know, yes, mm -hmm. where you talked about what really happened and yeah. you dug into what really happened. Uh, do you feel that is part of the reason why you get some of these criticisms at times? I do. I, in fact, I know, I know how I am. 
And um, I think one of my greatest strengths is knowing my limits, knowing what I'm good at, knowing my faults. In fact, the thing that is before you criticize me, I already criticized myself. Because <laughs> I'm, never, I'm never happy. We've won games 3-0, where we are all being healed, and I'm looking at the errors I made that maybe almost made us concede. Yeah. That's the kind of person I am. I'm a highly demanding person, and sometimes it's one of my weaknesses because in as much as I'm extremely demanding on myself, I try to pass it on to the others too. I'm expecting them also to be the man of themselves, but they are not me, so I'm wrong, you know? But being direct also, we have one life to live. I don't believe in if you beat around the bush, your life will definitely, in my opinion, things will go past you. I'm not also stupid enough to be direct and go to tell somebody you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. But what I mean by direct is that, for example, when I've had racism thrown at me during my racism, I've had the guts to say to the coach, no, I'm not accepting it. Mm -hmm. You know when a coach says to you in front, like a uh, racist in front of all the, all the teammates, like, uh, hey, how can this happen? In Nigeria, you should do that. And I tell him, hell no, you can't insult Nigeria. Now, what should I do? Be quiet, accept it, let him insult Nigeria, kill my moral self down, my self-esteem, and then because I don't want to be direct, and then tomorrow wake up and go to a fight. No. I tell him, coach, I won't accept it. You can't insult Nigeria. You can't insult my homeland. You can't insult me and my family. Now, most times they stop. So that means I won't get that abuse the second time. And I continue. Mm. When you look at the end result of my career, boom. I don't think I did badly. No, you did not. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, you did not. No, you did not. I, I had some of your teammates, ex-teammates, say that they are not surprised that you are the first among them to have written a book. And you did write here, I did, it, I did discover for the first time in your book that there's an intellectual part of you. You loved to read yeah. when, when you were, even as a footballer, even during camp days. Yeah. When others enjoyed themselves in other ways, you enjoyed yourself by picking up a book, you know, to read. Tell me a bit about that. In fact, Kunle, reading is my source of having fun. Um, till today, I read a lot, you know. And I have some friends that sometimes we share, oh, did you read this book, did you see this, what was the part, you know, things like that. Um, I... I found out from a long time ago that when you have knowledge, you have power. You don't have to, you don't have to be a gun to have power. But when you have knowledge about something, you don't fear it. It's like those days when we were kids, mm -hmm. when we see a, a dark skinned snake, that kind of thing, oh, we all have to get out of there because we know how venomous it is. But there are those green ones those days when we see, you know, not, we, we, want, we taunt them because we know they're not venomous yet. So the knowledge of that made us to be able to play football in those areas, even though we knew that maybe there are the green snakes there, you know. Um, the point I'm trying to reach out is that, like I encourage my kids to, to, do, to do that. They do it, but these days it's more on computer, so <laughs> unlike, unlike our time. Um, and I would not have had the life I've had or that I have if I had not been blessed with that belief that I need to read. Take somebody else's knowledge, borrow it. Yeah. The moment I take it from the book, it's no longer yours. Yeah. It's now mine, yeah. which is what I'm trying to do now. Yeah. So, with the book. Uh, so, Sunday, are you writing another one after this? Not yet. First, as, as at the moment, now it's, it's, it's just fresh. It's just some weeks old, or two months or something. Now I'm just like trying to promote it, trying to share the, the presence of it. Um, I've been very unfortunate with COVID, so we cannot traditionally promote the book like we can. So we are not limited to trying to like share it through the media like we can through the social media. And if you want to go big time to promote it like this financially, it's something that uh, I can't afford. So what I do is I just promote it as I can. So I'm not thinking much of it, but there are so many pages one could write about books. But the next one I'm going to write is not going to be about a story of my life is going to be sharing a philosophy 
with with the world, you know. Okay. And that's what um, that's what's in the books in my mind now that's running, because I'm seeing how excited anybody who reads who reads book becomes. And I really am grateful, Kunle. I'm grateful because you can't imagine the kind of video messages I, re I receive from people who read it, the excitement. <laughs> you know, my favorite chapter here is, is the chapter on Atlanta 96. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you know, we, we loved it when, when it happened, when you guys won gold medal. Yeah. We loved, we loved the game. That memorable game against Brazil Oof. when you came back. Yeah. We love all that. But when I read this chapter and I saw the background story. Yeah. What your team went through. Went through, yeah. Lack of funds. <laughs> the challenges and how you pulled through. That's the real story of Atlanta 96, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really. A lot happened because we left here six, seven weeks before the tournament to start to prepare over there. Um, well, it is no strange news to Nigerians that we're always having <laughs> something is coming later or something is not happening you know, in our own management style and everything. But it was difficult, Kunle. It, it, was. Um, it was difficult. But that's why till today I will never, I will never accept any member of that team being criticized. Hmm. I will never accept it. Because there is no way you can fault anybody from that team because everybody showed so much love for Nigeria. It was unbelievable. Mm. If you speak to any of us during those days, what was just going to hide is that, ah, no, no, my family, you know, my people back home. You know, some will start, ah, me, ah, oh, my, told me now, ah, but, 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 say, you know, talking about Lagos, like, if we win this and I go back to Lagos, you know, how would it be, you know? They were not really doing it just for them, but it was like, Nigeria has to be there. Mm. And if you, if you had seen our bus drive back to the hotel from the stadium, after they put the Olympics gold on our necks, mm. boy, if we had filmed it, believe me, today you and I will be swimming in money. Wow. Because I can't explain it. The excitement, the love, the commentary, the teasing, the, <laughs> even the, the, the coach, uh, Bonfrey Joe, he was shocked. <laughs> Players were teasing him in the first, like, Coach, now will you leave us alone? You know, we've given you the gold, have you? you know? So it was really nice. You know? it was nice. It was yeah. nice. I can imagine how many, how, how much the memories that came to you when you yeah. were writing this must have given you so much joy. Uh, and some of those places, I had to go back and visit them okay. before writing the book. But I had to make researches because I wanted to make sure that every information I was giving out was accurate dates, time and everything, trying as much as the best that I could, but uh, okay, nobody's perfect. Great. Sunday, I have to ask you this, um, uh, um, finally, uh, what happens if you are asked to come and manage Nigeria's Super Eagles again? Ah. Would you say yes? Well, if the situation to manage are better than what I suffered when I coached, then I will serve my country again. That's what, uh, that's what I have decided, because my country is my country anyway. But if it is to suffer the same thing we did like the last time, then it doesn't serve, it doesn't help. Because I don't think Nigeria should be fighting just to qualify for World Cups or to qualify for Nations Cup. I think when we leave here on a plane for any major tournament, somehow inside it should be our dream to bring it back home. Sunday, thank you very much. It's been nice having you on Channels Book Club. It's always good to be with you, my friend. So. Thank you. Thanks. We had such a good time with Sunday Ulisse. Behind the cameras is just a very cool guy, a really cool guy. Now, trust me, Audacity to Refuse is a book you need to read. It's really exciting. This is where we have to draw the curtain on today's episode. As always, we'll be delighted to get your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. My name is Ola Kunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.